we just want to say a huge thank you for your participation. We absolutely love to see you get involved. So the only things left to do now are to sit back, relax. Have you got your munchies? And enjoy the show. Hey everybody and welcome to Geeks of Honor Live as I look down and just make sure that my microphone isn't muted. Um, <laughs> I think we've had enough shows like that. Uh, it's great to see everybody joining us this evening. I really do appreciate it. Um, good to see the usual names in the chat. Uh, Capture Life to Connection. Hi, Lawrence, Novice Quads. I hope you're 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 feeling a bit better. I think I think you did report to me that you are feeling a bit better. Uh, Paul Lambert, evening, sir. Drone shots, Welsh Rob, uh, Covaction Droneography, Michael Blades. Hello, our our senior moderator, El Smeghead. Hello, sir. Um, how are you? Um, KH Drones was one of the early people as well, so great to see you. Um, I hope you're all doing extremely well. Um, thanks to Welsh Rob as well, because uh, the first thing when I opened up the chat today um, uh, told me that you have upgraded to geek level um, on your membership, so I really appreciate that. Um, if, if, if you want to um, become a member, um, I can put a little link in the chat there. There you go. Um, and you can, um, there's a link there which will give you some of the um, the perks, that type of thing, so you can find out about what kind of things you can do. And hello to Lib. Hey! Lib is in the chat. Good to see you. I want to say good to see you, sir. She'll, she'll kill me for that now. <laughs> and hi, thanks um, for joining us as well. Bill from Coast to Coast Drones, good to see you. So tonight we are speaking to Vic Moss um, of, of Moss Photography and now, of course, of um, the uh, the Drone Advisory Committee. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this evening. My first reaction when I saw the new list was obviously as someone that covers a lot of drone news, uh, excitement, because it was great to see who was on there. Um, and... It's it, it's it's to me it's it's an interesting list for sure. When I saw Vic Moss's name on there, um, I, I was personally actually quite positive towards it. Possibly not for the reasons that a lot of people think. Um, myself and Vic haven't always seen eye to eye. I've put a couple of my videos up on Facebook, and he's very kindly um, given me the opposite opinion. Now, anyone that knows my channel knows it. That's exactly what I love. I love to debate things. I love to put things up as this is what I think. What do you think? Um, and Vic has always been very honest with me about what he thinks about our content and everybody else's content and for me one of the positives is the fact that uh, Vic is so active on social media as well so that that to me but then that was my first reaction when I when I messaged Vic to say hey it's great to see someone that's so active on Facebook um, on the on the committee um, because I, I, I do see a lot of um, uh, positivities there uh, tonight we're also going to be joined by um, my other co-host Stephen Sutton all the way from sunny Dubai um, and we'll, we'll be finding out exactly where he has sand um, and how he's going to get it out of there <laughs> so we'll, without further ado we'll hop across um if anybody has any questions uh for for vic um please um tag at geeks of Arna in the chat and then list your question uh, and we'll try to get to as many of those as we possibly can uh during the course of the interview we have some questions ourselves which we're going to put and we're going to try and have a quite a free-flowing conversation uh, but if you do have any questions um we're, we're told that no subject is off limits so have at it basically hi guys how are you <laughs> Stephen's still still laughing from the uh, the sand thing. I have I have a feeling he didn't want me to announce to the world that he has sand in places that okay. he shouldn't have. I've got sand. I've got, I've got sand everywhere. Well, I'm I, not joking. I've okay. got sand all over all over my keyboard and and it's just it's horrible. Okay. <laughs> I have to say hash, hashtag first world problems when uh, both myself and Vic have told you about the temperatures that we're dealing with. Uh, <laughs> I think being because in the lovely Vic is warm complaining Dubai. About the, Vic is complaining about the snow. I'm complaining about the sand. I don't, I'm not sure he was complaining, actually. I think he did say yeah, he, would rather, he wasn't. He would yeah, rather he have the snow actually. than the sandstorms. Yeah. Yeah, I live in Denver. It snows. But that's fake news for you. <laughs> what can I say? You know, that's, that's the fake news media for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> So Vic, hi. Thank you very much for joining us. I really do appreciate it. I know that you're going to have a lot of um, uh, pulls on your time um, um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure it's been a very interesting first few days uh, being on that particular list. But, but as I say, thank you very much for joining us. I really do appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for the invite. Um, I, you know, I do appreciate it. And yeah, it's, it's been an interesting week or two. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Um, we, we, we've obviously got some some uh, subjects which which everybody is going to expect us to cover. Things like you know remote ID and um, uh, your your appointment on the list and that type of thing. But there's a bit of background that I think would be important as well. So 
first of all, I actually wanted to ask you, uh, for those that don't know you, and that, that, that should be fairly limited to anyone that's, that's, that's particularly active in, 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 in the drone hobby, um, but, but who are you and, and, and what's your experience within the drone hobby and industry? That's a good question. I think it's grand conceit to think everybody knows me. So um, I just always assume that not everybody does and people yes. I'm talking to don't, which is fine. That's how it should be. Um, I've been a photographer for 32 years. I've actually owned my own company here in Colorado um, for that long and got into drones in 2014. And uh, the, you know, the old P2 um, with, uh, with GoPros on it. I modified Ooh. GoPros with long lenses, the whole nine yards. Very cool. Um, and then uh, just sort of kind of accidentally got into the legislative and uh, advocacy side uh, here in Colorado. Uh, there was a company having a, or an organization having a meeting and I went to the meeting and said, hey, who's dealing with the legislature here in Colorado? Because they were starting to try and do some of the drone rules that you saw a lot back then and nobody raised their hand. So I left that meeting as the uh, legislative liaison for that group and it just sort of snowballed from there. But uh, it's been fun. It's been an interesting journey. Two or three or four years ago, if you asked me where I'd be now, I would have laughed at you. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's been really cool. And, um, you know, it, it's been a blessing, really, to be able to be where I am doing what I do. Excellent. Um, so you, you, you've, you've recently been appointed to the Drone Advisory Committee, the FAA mm -hmm. Drone Advisory Committee. How, how did that actually happen? Um, good question. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, the second time I've applied, the first time I applied, um, didn't get in. At which, you know, there weren't any drone operators at all. Uh, drone operators, hobbyists, you know, AMA was there, which was kind of nice, but there weren't any actual people who who, who put their fingers on the sticks a lot. Um, so this time, uh, both Kenji Sugahara and myself were both um, appointed. And uh, we just, I just wrote a, I guess I wrote a better application this time <laughs> than I did last time. Um, I also had set up a, uh, um, oh, what's the, what's the uh, signature site? I can't remember what it is now, but, um, uh, set up a site for people to sign a petition, and there were over a thousand signatures on that petition as well. So I think Excellent. that might have had something to do with it as well. Yeah, no, indeed, that, 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 that they they would certainly have been looking for that type of thing. Um, how 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 did you find out? Did it, is it just an email that pops into your into your email box to say congratulations? Um, or got a phone call first. Um, actually, I was we were I was with with uh, Kenji. We were we were going <laughs> back and forth with some things with DSCA at the time, um, and he said, "Hey, I just got an email," and so. Um, no, I called him, and then he goes, hey, I just got an email, so I called him. I'm sitting there talking to him, and then I got the email. Uh, so um, we had couldn't say anything for, I don't know, I guess it was about three or four hours, maybe five hours. And uh, finally, we were able to announce after the uh, FAA announced as well. Excellent. That's, that's exciting. I, I always wonder when that type of thing happens, um, <laughs> uh, how, how people find these things out. So it's, it's, it's always interesting. Thank you. I got a follow up phone call as well, but I couldn't take it because I was on one of these kind of things. And so my phone's <laughs> ringing. I'm going... Okay, I'll call back. <laughs> yeah, indeed, <laughs> that's fun. Um, so, what, 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 how, how would you describe the role of of the drone advisory committee? Um, well, first of all, you know, I was not appointed to run the FAA, so a lot of these suggestions I'm getting are impractical. Um, some of them are probably illegal, but um, well, it's basically what it does. It's a group of industry. They use the term stakeholders. That's as accurate as any uh, to advise as the term says, advise the FAA on certain aspects of regulation, standards, that type of stuff, um, how it will affect certain aspects of the industry. Um, they'll come to they'll come to the FAA or the FAA will go to um, will go to them. And just uh, it's, it's a it's a communicative uh, arena uh, to get the to get the word out and to get input into upcoming legislation and that type of stuff. Okay, so so uh, therefore every stakeholder will will have their input from the point of view of mm -hmm. obviously why mm -hmm. they were the, 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 the whole reason they're there is to give their input from the, from their branch of of, of, of that stakeholder uh, opinion. Um, right. Okay. So do do you do you, I know it's it's still a very recent uh, uh, appointment and it's it's still obviously and as you say you've applied before unsuccessfully so you weren't mm -hmm. necessarily sat there thinking right what am I going to do when I'm on the board because of course you don't know if you're going to get on the committee yet so uh, right. but do you, do you have any personal goals as a as a member of 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 the DAC yet? Well, the personal goals really are just to represent the industry as best as I possibly can, uh, whether it's the commercial side, the hobby side, because I'm a hobbyist, um, the FPV side, uh, I'm just dipping my toes into the FPV world. I got a bunch of little ones actually over this shoulder. Oh, yes. I got a couple of larger rigs coming uh, in the next week or so. And so uh, getting more into that side of things, having fun with that. 
So I'm just gonna represent people as, as well as I can, get as much information from different aspects of the UAS community as I can and do the best job. Okay, excellent. I mean, you've, 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 you've obviously talked about the, um, uh, the different areas that, that, that you're looking to represent. And what, one of the things that um, um, I found interesting, and I, I know it's interested you, of course, because, because of your own postings, um, is that there hasn't necessarily been a, a 100% positive reaction <laughs> um, to, to your name appearing on the list. Um, and um, it. yeah, um, which, which, which is interesting. And it, it, I, I, I did think it was a, an interesting move as well. One that one that I thought was positive that you did go to Facebook and on 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 onto the groups on Facebook and say, okay, I understand people aren't necessarily that that um, happy that I've been in, um, put on the committee and why. Let, let, let's have a discussion about that. Um, it, it, what kind of feedback did you get once you very bravely put that uh, that question out there? <laughs> I will say overwhelmingly positive. Um, uh, and some of it, some of it negative still, which is fine. I understand that there's, you know, if, if that just really shows that the passion is there for, you know, the FPV crowd for the, for the RC crowd, the, you know, the hobbyist, uh, recreational fly flyers, that passion is there. And I love seeing that passion don't necessarily love the way it's directed at times, but Hey, you know what? That's okay. Um, that's life. Uh, it's, that's social media, as we mentioned, um, Indeed. in our little talk before we went live here. Um, but it was overwhelmingly very positive and uh, very much appreciated and, and not done yet. Sorry, I got to plug my computer in here. Um, and, not, and definitely not done yet that, uh, you know, I still want to hear from those who are opposed to my appointment and Kenji's appointment. Um, the reasons why I don't want to just hear because I don't want you there. Yeah. Unhelpful. You know, I understand that. But um, if I'm not representing something the right way, in your opinion, let me know. I would, you know, I'm here to help everybody. Um, as best as I can, like I said, it's just an you know an advisory would committee. You, would you would you think that so, um, um, that, that that perhaps so, so, sorry, Stephen, just one thing before you jump in. Um, that that do you think there was any factor there from the fact that it was listed as citizen operator um, um, that, that that perhaps people have reacted to that part of it that they feel that um, perhaps that should be a Oh, anyway, people have these terms within of course every, every, every um, UAS flight is all under part 107 and everything else like that and you have the hobbyist exemption but we all have these terms that, that we call each other and we do it here in Europe as well where we call each ourselves hobbyists or professionals and that type of thing mm -hmm. um, but do you think that that particular wording had any impact on people perhaps saying actually is this guy a citizen flyer uh, I haven't thought of that but off my cuff I'd say no I think they're probably using the term citizen because I'm not a corporate flyer. Maybe, okay. I don't know, I, I'm just guessing. I love the fact that they actually made uh, a, a stakeholder group yeah, um, and allowed Kenji and myself to be in it. That was quite an honor. Absolutely. Uh, so Stephen, sorry, you had something to say. Yeah, I, I just I just want to fire, you know, just some comments that are just coming up here in the chat. I've got Bill, Bill here from Coast to Coast Drones. Uh, he says that, uh, um, he, had a, he had one. I've just just gone away here. Okay, he said here that we need at least two simple hobby pilots, otherwise we have no true voice. And he personally feels that if you can gain financially, you don't truly represent a hobby. <laughs> now, uh, you know. Now, I don't know really what he means by the fact that you know, uh, simple hobby pilots, because I think if you think of a simple hobby pilot. You know, I still, I mean, I do think of myself as a simple hobby pilot mm. in that sense, even though I'm in the professional side as well. I am, I am still a hobbyist. And when I do my hobby side, I do still think of myself as a hobby pilot. I don't go out having the professional attitude, although I do things from the aviation side. But do you see yourself as a simple hobby pilot? Um, I probably am not quite in what he is saying when he says uh, simple yes. hobby pilot and simply because the fact that I'm not an RC pilot um, mentioned it before I'll mention it again every time it's brought up you don't want me touching your RC aircraft <laughs> it will crash I promise you um, I like my GPS thank you very much but I'm still a hobbyist in the fact that um, I understand where they're coming from I totally understand the whole AMA field thing I'm an AMA member I actually rejoined AMA um, because of this I've had disagreements with Rich Hansen and the crew um, about how they handle certain things, but it's like, yeah, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Uh, but I joined the uh, FPV Freedom Coalition. Um, so am I, a, am I a, a simple hobby pilot? No, I'm not. 
but a simple hobby pilot's not going to get a, not going to get appointed to the DAC because they have to represent a group. Now, maybe with the new with the new citizen UAS thing, at some point they will, but um, it has to be somebody who is is known and respected in the community. Okay, because I I, I know that um, um for, for for instance other people who did apply obviously Zoe FPV quite publicly mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, applied. Would have been great. Um, yeah, ab ab absolutely, um, um, and and of course, I, I suppose you could argue she is a a, hob a true hobby pilot, and of course, she does represent mm -hmm. a, a a key demographic, um, and and I think it's a key demographic that I think needs engaging with the FPV community from the point of view of the FPV needs to bring everybody along for the ride, um, and you know, yeah, uh, so uh, so I can see that. I I, I also I, I do see what Bill means from the point of view of the financial side of things, but um, mm -hmm. I, I think it's also quite difficult to have everybody on the group represented from the point of view that as as you say the, the idea of it being a stakeholder committee um is is that these stakeholders do represent um uh, specific groups um but um and but as you say hopefully and um uh, they'll, they'll they'll widen things out even further as 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 time goes on it, it'll be very interesting uh, do, do, you, do you know when your first your first uh, uh, meetings and, and responsibilities as a member of the dac uh, are, are actually happening yeah, we were sent out an invite at the end of February, um, and all it was was a hold the date invite. I uh, don't have you know anything else with it. Yeah, I, I haven't even technically neither Kenji or I or any of the new members have technically been inducted yet into the into the DAC. Um, so you know um, we haven't gotten all that in yet, but as soon as they have the um, you know what we're going to be talking about, the schedule and that kind of stuff, then that will be passed along to all members, not just new members. Yes. But it is the end, end of I think it's December. I can't remember. It's the end, not December. It's the end of February. Um, I don't remember exactly what date yet. Okay. Turn the calendar. It's already Excellent. there. Very exciting. It's blocked out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. That's, that's that's definitely one you will reserve. Um, mm -hmm. m m moving on to specific things which are happening at the moment and 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 mm -hmm. and hot topics that, that, that you're going to obviously be discussing uh, uh, within your role as the, on, on the DAC. What what are your personal opinions on remote ID as it stands? Your sort of overall opinion. Uh, well, it sure beats what the NPRM said, 100%. Um, I've always been pro remote ID okay. uh, in concept. Yes. In concept, um, it, it's just something that needs to be done. Uh, I think with what we ended up with in the final rule was a workable solution. Uh, as uh, as the article we put out in the DSPA website was a good start. Uh, is the is the title Kenji chose, and it is a good start. You know, we 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 had some definite victories. Um, we had some, I don't want to say losses, but um, there are some things that are like, hmm, I'm not really happy about that aspect. Uh, okay. One of which I, I was helped on the rollout with the FAA on that with the communications team. So I actually had it 24 hours before everybody else. And when I read part of it, I sent an email to the FAA said, hey, this, this is not going to go over well. It would be like a lead balloon. And um, they emailed me back and said, we're working on it. We appreciate your honesty. Um, okay. So. That was nice to hear the fact that they they understand where responsive. we're coming from. Are, are you able to tell us what what that particular point was? Oh, it was it was pilot location. I've already talked okay. about it, you know, publicly, um, and they understand that. Uh, the reason that particular aspect is in there, this also public knowledge, is in the fact that um, you know if DHS, FBI, uh, SS, Secret Service, um, they would never sign off on that if it wasn't there. But we need to work on it. We need to figure out how to make this safe for us. Yeah, because it, it is it is a difficult issue. I I, I have mm -hmm. a, um, a personal interest in manned aviation as well, which of course, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, the, the 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 whole side of you know, uh, ID of course is, is is absolutely the norm as you would expect in manned aviation, and there there isn't this thought process, of course, that they need to hide pilot locations or anything because you know where the pilot is you yeah, see something up there yeah you see a little track on remote <laughs> <laughs> on 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 your screen you know exactly where the pilot is so it it, it is an issue for people to get over and I, I know that um in in the earlier um discussions when 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 pre-rule was out there, there, there was talk of being able to have different levels of access to the information for for law enforcement um mm -hmm. and 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 for others I, I do wonder if the, the the location issue 
whether they thought that that was less of an issue because it's it's it, this isn't going to be something broadcast across the internet so you know so, someone from new york can't see where someone in california is stood you're going to have to be relatively close to the location of, of where that person's flying to be able to identify um, but i i do know that certainly from all of the videos that, that that we've put up um regarding remote id it is the number one hot topic so it's, it's good to hear that you've already raised that um uh, particular yeah. part of it yeah. with them um, and, and it is difficult since we're because, not, you know, just real quick since we're not hmm. since we're not you know on wi-fi and on the internet um it, it is we do have to be you know somebody has to be fairly close um best case scenario from what i'm understanding this is where I, I'm, you know, not as smart as many others when it comes to the, the broadcast distance of uh, both Wi-Fi and, our, and uh, Bluetooth. You know, we're talking a kilometer and it's all line of sight. So if you're 400 feet in the air, it's going to be higher. If you're 150 feet in the air, it's going to be a lot lower. So nobody can sit there on the Internet and you yes. know, have their little browser open and have this <laughs> three or four or five or 10 mile radius and say, hey, there's somebody flying. Let's go wait for them to land and steal their stuff. You know, yeah, so, so that it, it is it is limited it is, from that good. point of view, which I, mm -hmm. I I I wonder whether that was the reason why the the the, the pilot uh, location was was in the documents. Again, obviously, no the, the same as the same as the um the modules and everything else like that. There is an awful mm -hmm. lot of work to happen. The the FAA are saying this is what we want them to do. Now we'd like you guys to innovate and and, and right, and, and right. Come up so with all performance based standards. Yeah, and I I have a feeling a lot of this will be not very different because this is the, the the final proposed rule. But I think the the the, the practicality, the working practicality may feel very different once this technology is actually in place and we're, we're perhaps in that period now where the FAA need to very carefully manage expectations and and that type of thing between now and, and, and this thing becoming a reality so, um, so that, that's going to be interesting. Um, and I think this is also where you know the, the community themselves can get involved and reach out and say look this this is unacceptable is it the final rule absolutely yes but that's I don't want to say will be could be maybe um, something that can be addressed either in the future or before it even, you know, we got 32 months basically from this month before it becomes an issue. Absolutely. Uh, so maybe there's some way we can work that out. That's no inside information. It's just kind of Vic being wishful yes, thinking. Yes, indeed, indeed. Um, but yeah. Okay, that, that, that is interesting. There, there, there's obviously a, an area within it which is which is obviously the the FPV side of things, which I know you spoke mm -hmm. about on the Joshua Bardwell video um, regarding remote ID that, that, that yourself and Kenji um, appeared on, um, which I think was actually filmed before the announcement, wasn't it? That you were yeah, it was, on the committee, which is which is fun. Wait a minute, was it that day? <laughs> no, I think no, no, no. I think it was before that. I okay. can't remember what we were doing that day. Yeah, um, um, is 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 that something that, that that you and Kenji have now raised directly with the FAA? The 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 issues that people within the FPV community have, as far as some of the wording seems to be quite restricted on on the, restrictive towards the for the FPV hobby. Um, not officially because they... we're not there yet. Okay. Um, so we, we're not we're not in a position to raise it officially. Yes. But um, yeah, unofficially, you know, one of the nice things about it, and the biggest thing with the FPV community really is the, uh, or not the biggest, but one of the biggest things is the BB loss. So you yes, know, absolutely. Do goggles with the, with the VO, um, you know, is that considered you know line of sight? Mm. And I think the FAA addressed this fairly well, although not really clearly in the final rule in that they said we refuse to define line of sight in the final rule, which then would default the rule back to what they've always been doing, which is, hey, if you've got if you've got a goggles on and you've got a V, you know, you've got a V, you're golden. Yes, so. which is which is which is how I, I, I when this was raised on on another stream uh, that I was in the mm -hmm. chat with, actually, um, um, th 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 that's exactly what I said as well is that you can't really take one paragraph of a final rule and address mm -hmm. that to the entirety of aviation law. You have to take everything within its context and, and, and within its within its interpretation. I think that's a that's a that's that's, that's, a, that's a, a very good point to make. Um, I, I do wonder though, and this is a general comment more than specifically regarding DAC or anything. We because we, we have this issue here in Europe as well, in in in, in the UK, we we almost have this sort of this, this point of this fence between the FPV community and the regulators, and again, this is not just the FAA, this is worldwide, where everybody talks about, obviously, if you have goggles, you have a spotter. And, you know, we know that the vast majority of FPV flyers fly without spotters, of course. They are lone mm -hmm. people flying in a park. 
Um, there's, there's never been in my any... backyard. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, you know, there, there, there is, there's never been any major issue from that. Um, you know, it, in actual fact, most of the big news stories about drone pilots being arrested or you know, coming uh, drones going close to, to uh, aircraft has always been the camera drone side of thing. It's been us. It's been us evil camera drone flying. For the most part, there was one questionable one in out of Vegas two yes. years ago, and that was never proved one way or the other. But that, but yeah, it, it's absolutely for the most part the camera drones, for lack of a better word. But that's, I think, one is because the FPV folks just they're not getting that high, you know, um, and you know, the vast numbers. Of drone of camera drones out there are just so overwhelming, mm. um, and I always Absolutely. like to say, hey, stupid people have money too, so they can buy drones. Yes, um, you, you know you can't. You but can't it's the, it's the, but it's the accessibility. But you can't find it. Yes, yeah, yeah. But it's the but it's the accessibility. But if you look mm -hmm. at the FPV community, if you look at the at the RC community, they tend to, in a sense, self-regulate themselves. So well. they have this, uh, uh, let's say, internal kind of infrastructure where they know what they should and they should not do and they do see themselves as as well i would say more the rc but they see themselves as you know as actual aviation whereas mm -hmm. a majority of drone mm -hmm. pilots out there mm -hmm. who go out and will buy a mavic let's say mini or mavic 2 pro or whatever it is they will not see themselves as actual aviation and i very very rarely hear the word aviation mentioned when it yes. comes to you know those who actually own a drone when in actual fact they should they actually should but i think the accessibility uh, and the fact that you can buy these things over the counter this is the problem and i have a very good example of this actually i think it was yesterday or the day before here in dubai uh, where i'm working right now is in a very very strict no fly zone extremely extremely uh, strict no fly zone and there was someone flying uh, you know, a Mavic right next to where we were. And I had to go out and speak to the person to say, you shouldn't be flying here. And the, and the person didn't have a clue. He had no clue. Mm -hmm. He had just bought himself a Mavic Mini 2 and, uh, and was flying. And, yeah. and there was, Which you know, is the he biggest didn't threat to the do home. any sort of... Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and this is very, very dangerous. And of course, this puts a major impact onto the community. It can have an effect on people you know, here in Dubai, who actually fly drones, and uh, mm. and but uh, you know, again, not having that mindset, it's not having the aviation mindset, and I yes. have to be very, very critical of of the drone community out there who don't have the aviation mindset. You are damaging what we are doing mm. from a hobby point of view, and also from a personal point of view. So, yeah, and I think that this one aviation is very doesn't important. really come into our let's say you know our own environment that you know that often it should come in it actually should be a major part of how we talk with exactly. the drone community but just, we don't um, um, two, two very Absolutely. quick things on housekeeping um if anybody has a specific question i am picking your questions up in the chat here and there but if you could tag at geeks at the beginning of your question it'll help it pop out on the chat a little bit better for me uh Co action dronography thank you very much for becoming a channel member um welcome to the drone club i really appreciate it um, and rob kamada um uh thank you very much for the 20 dollar super chat very very generous of you simply thank you well uh, thank you for being here so i really appreciate it um but yes but but my, my my point on the fpv side of things that, that i would get your sort of personal opinion um as as, as, as obviously as you're saying you, you haven't even been inducted into the dac yet um is, is is how how do we get that fence down between the fpv community and the regulators because there, when you have a, a um, an FPV community that want to be part of regulation, they want to uh, be legal, they want to fly safe. And of course, as we were just saying, that side of the hobby has an excellent safety record. How do we get those two side of things together when there is this one principle that of 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 the spotter when you have goggles on which keeps them apart essentially there there is you know from from line one of regulation um within the fpv community they have a a benchmark that they simply cannot get over um it's definitely a a topic of discussion frequently um and usually um amicably but um i think having I'm saying I'm, I'm hoping to be that 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 fence breaker or fence mender, depending on how you, you know which way you want to approach yes, it. Yes, indeed. Uh, Kenji and I both, I should say. Um, but having a, you know the original DAC membership that, that that was not present, you certainly had things like Brendan, you know, from DGI. He was a big advocate for us. Um, you know, not just 
you know, not just the, the drone side, but he's an AMA member, has been for a long time. He flies RC. Um, and then we had a couple others on there as well. But the FPV community itself has not been well represented there. And um, we hope, Kenji and I hope to do that, you know, be able to do that. Dave Messina applied as well. Um, and it would have been really kind of nice if, if he was uh, if he was chosen as well or in, in lieu of either my Kenji or myself. But, um, you know, we, we know Dave. We've been working with Dave on a number of things for, gosh, I don't say the last year or so. So that that view is going to be present. Will an FPV specific guy or gal, yes. Yes. let's be fair here, um, sit, have a seat at the table? No, not yet. But next time. Yeah, no, indeed. Absolutely. Because it, because again, it, he I, will I, be there. He when, will when, be there. We'll make darn sure that he was there. Yeah, no, indeed. And and, and it's, it, it was one of my thoughts when when Zoe was applying and, and, and mm -hmm. uh, we, we all certainly recognize that as, as, as a very strong voice within the FPV community and would have become even right. stronger, of course. Um, but again, that that whole spotter side of things, for, for me, it, it's it's the one thing in the corner of my mind that just scratches away. And I wonder if we could get rid of that one roadblock. Um, either way, you know, either finding a, a solution which satisfies both sides or mm -hmm. regulators of the world accepting that the hobby is safe without a spotter within certain regulations and parameters, then actually we, we, we can then bring everybody together and, and, and move forward right. as one. Um, but I don't yeah. have any official inside information, but I will say that I don't see that being an issue fairly soon going forward. OK, excellent. Thank you. I mean, that, there's, not, there's nothing official. No, 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 no. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not this, telling telling tales out should, of school. I should have a little just. I should have a little disclaimer. Yeah. We go to every thirty seconds should, saying like, the views and opinions. Yeah. Represent those of the FAA. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, so indeed. But, 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 but you know what? Speaking of views of the FAA, I want to get back real quick. Something Steve, Steve mentioned. Um, one of the other hats I wear in the OES industry is I'm an I'm a FAA safety team. In what's called the drone. Yes. Pro, so I work with education on the drone side. Um, actually, this this uh, not uh, this coming Saturday, there's a drone drone careers thing at one of our aviation museums, and I'll be there at the FAA booth um, talking to people about that. Education is huge in the uh, you know safety education that kind of stuff, and the fact that we are aviators one way or the other, where any time we leave the ground, is is definitely a key focus um, of the FAA. Is just getting those getting that mechanism in place to get the word out better than it is now uh, is always a challenge. Um, in the in the manned aviation world, you've got a key point of, of takeoff. Everybody goes to the airport. Nobody flies their their 172 out of their back. Yeah, well, some people do, but um, you know nobody nobody was you know will do that. So there's always that one key point of, of of where you can get the education out, and that does not exist in the in the UAS world. Um, no, AMA was a great thing for the for the RC world. So there was that aspect of it too. So millions of drones. It's all over the board. So where do you educate? And that's something. And if anybody out there has a good idea, hey, yeah. I'm easy to find. I'm not going to give indeed. my information out. No, yes, indeed. Anyway. No, yeah, but you I'm are easy very easy to find. <laughs> Let yes. me know. I'll get it to the right people. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, Paul, Paul um, um, Widmeyer, I hope I've pronounced your name correctly, Paul. Um, he, he, he had a question regarding who was going to provide the technology to um, uh, law enforcement. He, he works in law enforcement um, mm -hmm. and feels that they have no clue about drones and don't expect the wider law enforcement to learn within two years. And that that, that was actually quite well covered in Remote ID, wasn't it? It's um, it's it's essentially it has to fit the current tech. Yeah, it's you know it, basically if you've got you know if you've got a smartphone, um, you'll be able to pick up our data, our information. Yeah, all kinds of tech. Um, and um, Mark Colburn is also on the DAC. He's with the Dallas PD, or he's actually just retired from the Dallas PD. So he's got a great perspective um, of, uh, of, of that as well. Um, but when it comes down, if it comes down to remote ID, um, it's not going to be that difficult uh, for a drone or for, the, for, for, for law enforcement to have access to it and to understand. Um, we, as again, we put the drone, drone pro hat back on. Um, I've worked with a couple of very lo uh, local uh, police departments and gone in and helped them educate things. I have, one of the things, I have a, a big old huge stack, of this is called Leap, Leap Cards, a law enforcement oh, yes. assistance yes. program. And uh, I carry them in my car, and every time I see a cop, I hand them three or four. Um, so uh, it's, it's, 
it's again, it gets back to that. Where's the mechanism we can reach everybody at the same time? Yeah, and, and that and that is difficult because we we do have a very wide community with drones and mm -hmm. with with pe with manufacturers like Sony about to enter into it with with potentially yeah. even even more sort of selfie style drones and mm -hmm. all the way through to I know they're they're, they're 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 going to be bringing the commercial side of things as well. But we are law enforcement. The, um, just real quick, if, if mm -hmm. anybody in law enforcement has a question, every every part of the United States, and I'm assuming Europe and places like that as well, they have here. It's called FISDO, which is a flight standards district office it's basically the local faa office reach out to them and they'll get you in touch with either your leap agent or uh or somebody like myself who can go in and do the educational side of things i love talking to cops about this one because they're always like oh this is cool yeah. um so uh, you know it's very seldom an issue i've never actually never had a problem never had a negative encounter with a police officer and a drone so Dave. um i know people who have but um we want to help police officers and police departments and any first responder um yes get, and, get and, educated and actually, uh, because uh, it's their job sucks let's make it easier for them I mean, yes, let's be indeed. Here. their it's, job it's, sucks yes it hasn't so been a, let's make it, it as easy as possible as we can for them Indeed, and and it's it, to, to to address Paul's question as well from a wider point of view. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I think that if anybody is concerned from remote ID from the point of view that they just don't want to be tracked because they're not flying in the right way, then of course you know that that's a whole separate question. But in actual fact, remote ID isn't really the enemy from from that point of view. Um, that mm -hmm. that that technology is already there. Um, we have mm -hmm. um, um, another. Um, well, he's he's been on the channel so many times, hasn't he, Stephen? Andrew McQuillan, um, who who is mm -hmm. who, who's gone who is now breached from being a guest to essentially being a co-host on the channel as well um, and he, he he runs a company which which has a public safety mechanism and they are hired to turn up to locations or events to mm -hmm. to, to track rogue drones essentially right. and they're able to from from their little vehicles track a radius of 20 to 25 miles yeah. um, mm -hmm. and identify exa exactly where the pilot is flying from and send the police officer to their exact location so th this kind of technology is already there if they want to find you um, and I, I, I think as that technology advances, um, it, it isn't it isn't too much of a leap to expect mm -hmm. large municipalities to actually have this in place within towns and cities, so they can control where people are actually, or, or they can they can see where people are flying from. Well, even now, I mean, you look at there's there's a few, and I'm sure they're in Europe as well. Um, there are a few smart cities out there that have have that network capability yes. of, of whatever they use it for, you know, fire and rescue um speed cameras i mean whatever they're using it for that exists already so would it be that hard to to you know add add some line of code or add some um you know receivers or transceivers or whatever to that no absolutely not um but that's not really what it's for anyway no that's so, right exactly exactly but 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 certainly you know remote id is not the the, necessarily the big baddie as far as detecting your no. drone is, is concerned because no. it actually no. if, if there is a particular location that authorities want to keep secure they can already do that with the current right. technology let alone what is being announced in the next couple of years and and the, and, and the, you know, exactly. the, the pilots that yeah. are being run at the moment there are there are, there are some scary stuff as far as de detecting where you and your drone is without you even having anything to do with it because of course as people say the, any any issue with with registration, remote ID, are the people that bypass all of that? Are the illegal flyers who who, who have nefarious mm -hmm. um, um, uh, reasons, which of course, thankfully, are, are a very very small um, um, minority out there. Very um, very small, local before, but small. <laughs> indeed. Uh, before I move on from that, have you got any other questions on that, Stephen? Yourself? No, I don't actually. No, I think this has been Good. covered quite well. Excellent. Um, I'm, you know, happy to move on. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Um, I do want to shout out Coast to Coast. I've seen him active a lot. He's got some great questions and he brings up some great points. So um, thank you for that. That's yeah, what no, we indeed. want to hear. That's indeed. what we want to and, and, yeah. and, and in fact, I'm going on with Coast to Coast. You have to put the okay. date in the chat. Um, uh, Bill, because we we were having a chat with, as I say, from um, from I, I was in his live chat on, on on his last stream regarding remote ID a few days ago, and um, yeah, it was um, it, it was very interesting what came up. So we're going to bring those we're going to bring all of us together and have a good old chat about it. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Dean Dierios is asking, can can Vic please uh, clear up oh, when that. the rollout of these changes are coming? Uh, some seem to be uh, in oh. 60 days and other in 19 months. Right, that, um, a there's one. a person out. Talking about this is in putting out incredibly incorrect information, um, which surprises me because he's always on the ball with this type of stuff. Mm. Uh, won't mention names, obviously. Yes. But uh, and I got an email from uh, from uh, one of the people at Women and Drones today saying, "Hey, what is this? What's the right way?" The rollout for um, 
the uh, basically, I think, you know, if he's talking about remote ID, we're talking 18 months for um, uh, manufacturers, 30 months, well, 32 months for us to be um, uh, compliant. Yes. But the issue that is being raised is the recurrent training that's going to happen. Um, that particular person has the same timeline for remote ID, and that is not true at all. Um, the key date we're waiting for is date of publication by the Federal Register, and it's in their ball. It's just whenever they do it, they'll do it. It could be tomorrow. It could be end of the month. Um, 45 days from that date, you can go on to FAAsafety.gov and take the training. It will be there. It will be available. And I'm told it's, it, that's a hard date. It's not an FAA date, 45 days, okay. and it happens 90 days later. Um, it is a hard date. And then when the rule becomes effective 60 days after publication, then you then you you're, you're current. Um, you can fly at night. Um, you can do the over people stuff with first classification or first category, um, not over groups of people. Yes. But you can, uh, you know, the, the category one, if you've got a drone that will do it, that's the key thing there. There aren't any drones out there that, uh, no, that, indeed. Are, yes. that qualify that except uh, some of the smaller tiny, uh, tiny whoops and center whoops. Yes, we, we, we have that specific issue um, over here in Europe as well. Actually, we've just had a whole new raft of regulations. And um, oh, um, with, with, with the qualification that I've actually taken, I'll be able to get within five meters of uninvolved people with my camera drone, right. which is which is very sexy. Um, but um, the, the, those drones don't exist yet because, of course, the manufacturers have to wait for it rather mm -hmm. than regulators to talk about bringing it in. They have to wait for it to be in law. And now it's in law. Of course, they're all very busy getting those plans with those drones up and, and, and getting them out, out, out into their uh, into their factory so i'm expecting to see some pretty cool drones over the next couple of years which is another another side which is going to be interesting from this point of view is is the innovation of manufacturers um, and it's going to be interesting to see how the the large drone manufacturers whoever they be in the next five years um how they actually respond to all of this um and 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 i think we, we could end up seeing some pretty highly niche specialized drones especially oh, yeah. for, the, for the flights over people and, and that type of thing for the for the tv industry etc do, yep, do, yep. do you have um, um, any thoughts on the side of um, the good old topic of, of drones, which is which is mass drone delivery? Do you have any thoughts <laughs> of um, <laughs> what, what is what is your personal feeling towards those? First of all, I would say uh, personal feelings are if they happen, they happen. You know, I don't care. Um, the, the, the issues are going to be a lot of people going to be upset by the noise. Um, yes. I think that's going to be the biggest complaint. Um, you know, there'll be the you know, fly over my house. I'm going to shoot it down, folks. Uh, but we already have those anyway, and 99.9% .9 of those are nothing but keyboard warriors. Uh, we have to worry about the 0.1%. Um, but I see, I've never been really bullish on it. Hmm. Uh, I I just don't see the, 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 the skies crowded with drones from Amazon yes. and from Google. Uh, will it happen? Sure, why not? It already is. Let's, let's be honest. It already is. And it's very niche market um the whole mass i think everybody's seen that video of a blimp and then all the drones flying out of the drought you know, <laughs> yes, out of the, yes the april fools one, yes. cgi by the way some yes. people don't understand that and, and, it, and it was meant um, as an april fools as well of yeah course. i just i don't see it being the issue i may be dead wrong but i don't see it being the issue yeah. um, that it's going to be i I, I, th I think that Especially there is, there is a, a former amazon pilot or guy who worked in the program going hmm i'm gone so, yes, uh, yes, yeah. indeed. Because there, there, there are sort of two aspects there. There's, there's obviously there's the um, the largest um, pilot of Amazon deliveries, which happened in Canberra in Australia, uh, which mm -hmm. of course was actually halted early due to noise complaints. Um, so <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, um, uh, it, it, it was supposed to run for a few months, and it actually stopped after a few weeks be because of the sheer numbers of, of noise complaints that, that were happening. So again, obviously Amazon have said, "Great, that, that's told us something. We're now going to go away and, and work on that." And, and we were mentioning smart cities before, and I, and I think that again is where the development of delivery drones will probably come into it because, of course, especially over here in Europe, our roads, our houses, and locations are so full of trees, old buildings, mm -hmm. different shaped buildings, and everything else like that. Um, when you see these little adverts for a for a, for a delivery drone and it's got a little wire attached to it dropping off your parcel and everyone's waving and smiling at the drone yeah that's great but actually that is obviously a very modern property they're dropping that off to and uh, mm -hmm. um, you then have to worry if the the family dog comes running in thinking it's a stick he needs to catch etc so there are there are there are, right. there are a, a lot of issues to, to get around there um and and i wonder actually if we'll actually see more things uh, um from the point of view of commercialized drones uh, police beyond visual line of sight drones that 
that type mm -hmm. of thing, security patrol drones, which are already in place in Hong Kong. Um, and, yep, they're in and, place and, here and, in a couple of places that I work with that will remain nameless. Yes, indeed. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think sometimes people's vision is 100% on things like delivery drones, when actually there's there's a lot of other commercialized drones coming mm -hmm. much, much quicker than that, which are going to be part of everyday life an awful lot sooner than people realize. Um, right. do, how, how, how would you, do you, do you have any opinion and, and, and how would you feel about the, the whole side of um, a UTM, Unified Traffic Management? Um, unmanned Traffic Management here in the United States is UTM and I think you know it's it's coming it has to um, especially if there are things like the BB loss uh, you know uh, first responders Amazon they'll happen um, they'll need to know where drones are because you know you've got a big quad or octo or whatever's you know delivering your package and you know I'm out there testing my gear or Johnny's out there or James yes. out there <laughs> flying their new drone in, in the neighborhood they have to talk to each other um, a lot of people are saying that, well, Amazon wants to buy the airspace. And they've tried. FAA said, yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, but maybe this is a VIC. This is not FAA. This is not anybody. Thank you. Um, this is just VIC. <laughs> but, you know, let's say the Amazon drone has a receiver. We've got remote ID up and I'm flying around or I'm doing, a, I'm doing a, a, an automated flight over a construction site, whatever. That Amazon drone will say, oh, VIC's over there, whatever. I need to go around it. Yes. So um, I don't. I don't think they're going to be given the priority they want, uh, but I may be wrong. Money talks, but um, I don't think it's talking that loudly right now. Indeed, and and, and again, that's it's an important thing for people to to think about from the point of view that um, U UTM is happening worldwide. That we have mm -hmm. to find a way for for unmanned aviation to to cohabit with manned aviation, and there to be you know different levels of unmanned aviation as well that have to share the skies. And um, you know, remote ID is is, is, is only one step. From the FAA, I want to make sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, but I think, but I think we, I, but I think we should be realistic about. I mean, we keep on talking about Amazon, and we keep on talking about drone deliveries and all the rest of it but i think we should be realistic about where we should be starting with this yes. and i think that one of the you know in terms of social acceptance we should be looking and i and, and i think that this is where things will happen more is in medical deliveries i think that we will be seeing more within the hospitals i think we'll see me more within uh you know going going between practices and stuff like that i think that once once that starts up and we have that social acceptance more that it will become a normal then 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 i think it will see more of the amazons and all the rest of it because you know i've you know i've even said in my own you know you know one of my own past past videos that that that, that i think that you know the amazon drone deliveries i think it's just at the moment it's kind of pie in the sky it's more like ideas yes. but yeah, i don't no, exactly. like to see that happening because I think that it's a waste of money at the moment. I hate seeing money being wasted, uh, you know, in in the drone industry. I, I really hate to see money and and within drone, you know, I think within drone deliveries, that I think that there's money being being absolutely wasted. Yes. I think that there is, I think there's a few good projects coming, and I think that I say Mana Drone, for, mm. for example, in Ireland, mm. I think mm. that that is one of the one of a very good examples of you know, you know of good investment and getting something out of it and hopefully that will actually continue for the next few years and also beyond but i think that you know all this you know all this amazon and all the rest of it is it's it's just a complete waste of time and and, and i hate to see people wasting yes wasting their money on it i, I, you know, I know what you mean we, we, really we are anywhere. We, we, we're kind of like with, with drone delivery we're, we're almost like we were 15 20 years ago with self-driving cars that that actually yeah. everything we were talking about in the very early days and um, when you look at teslas now actually it isn't really what you know but back then we were, they were talking about having separate roads for self-driving cars mm -hmm. and there would be no integration and so I, I have a feeling that the drone delivery of the future will actually be something um very very different to, to what we well, it has to be different to what we imagine and what we yeah. see in the pilots now but uh, but that but that is that that, uh, uh, that is that is down to the innovators to find the solution i suppose um we do have another message actually we mentioned bill from coast to coast drones and he was raising some good questions he did put in the chat a little while ago that he's not quite as terrified as he was before um but still thinks it needs fixing in some areas which i think um it, it's good to, hear, good to hear you're not as terrified bill um but i think we all agree that there are there are some 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 tweaks here and there which are certainly required um 
one 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 question which and, and again because you haven't been through your induction you, you you may not actually genuinely know the answer to this but it's one of the things i've always worried about uh, worried worried about and wondered about in terms of things like the dac what, what are the limitations or contractual obligations in terms of you speaking publicly um, um are you able to still publicly disagree with faa policy and an faa guidance um or or, or is there a little bit kind of like a YouTube channel that has an FPV agreement. Uh, sorry, sorry. A YouTube channel that has a DJI agreement where you can you can you can review our drone, but you can't say anything too naughty about it. <laughs> well, as you mentioned, I haven't been inducted yet, so I don't know. Um, I will have a conversation with one of the FAA or one of the DOT lawyers. That's coming up. Um, but there will. I, I have no doubt since it's you know it's a, it's a federal committee uh, and cong congressionally mandated. I have no doubt there'll be things I can't talk about. Um, you know, and there's also yes. the task groups that, you know, individual little groups that I've actually been involved with, um, uh, that there are things I won't be able to talk about. Absolutely. In any federal discussion, there's things you can't talk about, but as far as disagreements, you know, it's an advisory council. There's going to be disagreements with the FAA. Uh, it's not, it's not a bunch of yes people sitting around the table, you know, giving the, F I was going to use another acronym and I won't, but, yes. um, <laughs> giving, giving people, you know, giving the FAA whatever they want. Um, you know, so yeah, it's 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 just not going to be a, a bunch of people saying yes to the FAA because that's okay. not what the FAA wants. You know, look at the NPRM; they didn't want a bunch of people just say yes, this is fine, or yes, this sucks. Um, they want they want information and they want suggestions and they Excellent. want they want but problems I, solved. Yes, indeed. indeed. But I think that's really important. I think that's something. You know, I mean, you can have said that, like, you know you know like it's obvious in a sense but i mean it may be obvious to you but i don't think that that's very obvious to to the drone community out there and i think that that's something which really should be emphasized because the negativity that you have been getting over the past week or so let's say even the past couple of days that we you know even that i've noticed which i think is completely unreasonable to be honest that's just my own personal opinion uh, i think it's unreasonable that you have that, that because so I think that you are there to represent someone can have their opinion about what they think and what they feel and what you, you know, you know, they may not know you in a sense, you know, so having, so having an opinion, you know, based on what they feel, I think is, let's say is wrong, but if they can back it up, whatever, you know, but I mean, that just says it all that you're not going to be, or you, this is not a committee of yes men and you will say what you feel. You know, that's something that they really have to know and they have to understand and, and, and I hope that they take that and, and, and be, you know, and they can have open discussions and they may not agree with you, but they don't have to say things that they have been saying in such a way because I think it's unfair, you know. Well, I appreciate that. And again, it, it gets back to the passion. It does. Um, these people are incredibly passionate about things and I understand that. I love that. Definitely feed on that passion. Um, but just maybe channel it slightly differently when you when you have a suggestion for me. Exactly. Some of the well, suggestions yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gotten are yeah. not physically possible. Just saying. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the first time that, that we've we've actually spoken um, in person as as in person as we're able to in COVID times. Um, uh, we as, as I said we we've interacted on Facebook previously, um, and I'm, I'm happy to say that that having chatted with you for just over the last hour, um, my my opinion is unchanged. Um, I, I've, I've, I feel like um, I feel positive about uh, your, your involvement with the DAC, um, especially as I say, you know, um, when when you are so active on, on on social media. When I when I saw your post asking for feedback as as to why people are feeling negative, I thought, okay, that's that's exactly why it was positive towards you being on there actually, yeah. because it is it is yeah. you know trying to address things head on, which I think is extremely healthy. Um, do, you, do you have anything else before we wrap up? Anything else? That you, that any, any, anything else message-wise, etc., that, that, that you want to deliver out to the community? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, you know, other than the fact that, that Kenji and I, um, we're both. We're, you know, this is going to be a cooperative thing. This is not going. This is not going to be confrontational at all. We don't want that because confrontational flat out doesn't work. Um, and also the fact that you know we're both DSPA, uh, Drone Service Provider Alliance, is is probably raise some raise some eyebrows at the faa because it's like oh crud we can't really appoint both of them this this dspa started after 
at least got rolling after the whole application process was done. So I was not brought in as a DSP and a COO. I was brought in as the owner of my company, yes. you know, as somebody who flies for a living, um, who has fun, uh, trying not to kill my drones with FPV. And, um, as, as, you know, I'm, I'm really active in the social media side of things. And um, they like that in that mm -hmm. I can, you know, I have a really good, really good feeling for the community. Obviously, the commercial side more. Yes. And the hobby side and then getting more and more into the FPV side. And uh, I, I want to hear from everybody on that. Um, give me your suggestions. Yeah. On, on, on that point, and this is this is completely a brainstorming moment. So again, the, the disclaimers are flying down the screen that this is Sean Hickey of Geeks Finder speaking to Vic Moss, not Vic Moss of DAC or you know representative mm -hmm. of FAA or anything. Um, the the criticism that there isn't enough FPV um, representation um, and, and and what they've and what the community feels is pure FPV re re representation. Would you be interested in having some kind of a group set up where the FPV community could speak to you directly from the point of view of actually discussing their e either. And, and I don't mean a group of 5,000 FPV pilots screaming at you. Um, I, I, I mean, you know, um, them recognizing one person that can chat with you that is passing on views and that type of thing. I'm hesitating here just a little bit because we have, we have an announcement coming, not okay. we as in Kinj and I, yes. um, I have to qualify the we these days. Um, have an announcement coming that will satisfy that Excellent. aspect of it. Um, but as far as just, you know, people reaching out to me, I am probably one of the easiest people in the world to find on the internet. Hence so, you are here today. Don't yes. show up at my front door. I have a dog. But, um, you know, it's, you know, call me. Don't call me either. He email me. <laughs> Actually, don't email me. No, yeah, yeah, indeed. <laughs> um, you know, I, got, I don't know how many different email addresses, but email your suggestions. Um, I want to hear. I do want to hear. And uh, as far as a specific group, if that becomes a necessity, I have no problem with that. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Okay. Well, well th 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 thank you so much for joining us today. I, I, I really do appreciate it. You came on at very short notice, and um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we managed to get to you before before the DAC um, um, media handling uh, <laughs> representatives. Well, I've already been dealing with them. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as I say, I, I, I really do appreciate it. Um, you, mm -hmm. you, you have cleared um, a few things up, and I hope everybody watching this awesome. live um, and and who are who are seeing this in in the um, on, on the replay um, can see that. But as, as Vic says, he isn't hard to find. Um, go, go out and find him on social media. Um, he has a website for, for Moss Photography. Um, so there is the email on there, etc. as well. Um, and you know, hence he is here speaking to a, a British and Scottish guy on their, on their live stream <laughs> of a, a channel in England which covers US regulation. Um, <laughs> you you well, can't well, get much more the, easy to find. People say in aviation, as the FAA goes, so goes the world. Yes. Um, so that's, it's a really good idea to keep an eye on things here in the States. Excellent. Um, so... And I see X Jets on the, you know, I I appreciate him. Uh, he, and I've, he and I have had words um, in written work form, obviously. But yes. um, no, I appreciate his views. I don't agree with them most of the time. But hey, you well, know what? Foul. That's that's cool. That's what this is all about. Let's get the word out. Indeed, we we, we, mm. we have we have the possibility there of one of these sort of you know Mike Tyson um, um, uh, versus. As long retired. as he doesn't bite my ear off, <laughs> we, could, we could bring you two together as a as a as a, as a pay for as a pay for view yeah, battle let's, let's do that. Let's uh, do that. for pay charity for with, with me with me and Bruce. That would be interesting. <laughs> but yeah, Bruce. Might Bruce, get me um, picked off Bruce, of that, you for joining us. Would <laughs> 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 please some people probably. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, yeah. As, as I say, thank you very much for joining us, um, uh, Stephen. Thank you for joining us as well sir i really really do appreciate it uh, yes bruce That's sorry bruce is asking pleasure. if we've seen his guns if you haven't seen the guns <laughs> he's talking sorry. about go to xjet's channel and he gets his yeah. guns out i don't have guns i have baby and, guns I'm, uh, yeah, know, he, I'm an art major what can i say i mean you know, bruce is a fairly um honest open and sometimes oh, aggressive individual um, so I'm, I'm already fairly intimidated by him but when he got his guns out i was hiding behind the sofa as, as 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 a supporter of drone regulation myself, okay. I, I I felt a little bit afraid. I have to say, <laughs> um, but yes. But Stephen, thanks for joining us. Uh, what 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 time is it in Dubai at the moment? It's it's uh, it's just quarter past twelve. Actually. Oh, that's not too bad actually. We normally we it's normally not too bad. Yeah, we normally start even later actually, don't we? Your time. So um, we do. We you, do. You, you have that beach look. I wouldn't want to say beach bum because you're a hardworking man. You have that beach look that I'm very jealous of at the moment. Um, 
Yeah, well, I've I've been here a month now. I've actually wow. just I'm actually here a month today, and I still have another three weeks to go. So oh, very you know, nice. So until the end until the end of until the end of January, and then and then I'm and then I'm back home to see my family. Oh, excellent! Nice. Are you are you missing Finland? I am. It's snowing. It's just it's oh. it's it's actually snowing heavily there just now. But uh, but I'm 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 really enjoying the sun. Actually, it's really nice. It's 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 it's, it's actually chilly in the evenings, which which is uh, I'm even though I'm wearing shorts, but I was quite cold this evening uh, when I when I actually finished. I work, realize, so, but uh, yeah, it's yeah. I, I I realize I just asked you if you miss Finland on an open public forum <laughs> that your wife could watch. So I apologise. Of course, he is missing Finland. He wants to get home to do his fatherly and husband's responsibilities um, that he misses yes. dearly yes. and wishes yes. he could be there yeah. as well to cover. That's the official <laughs> statement. And we'll we'll have to see if 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 yeah. if, um, if Mrs Sutton has killed off any more of your your, your plants by the time you get home. Which anyone uh, it, 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 it was commented. It was actually commented tonight. I noticed there was a few comments about the plant and, and how much they were missing the plant and, yes. and missing the plant as well. Indeed. Well, right. I, 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 we, we're actually uh, live again tomorrow night, uh, which was one of our scheduled shows, which was moved from Thursday due to some technical problems with our internet. And um, uh, Steve, uh, it's actually Andrew McQuillan will be our co-host, and he promises to have um, uh, two ferns. I think we're going to have in the background Ooh. there. So. Yeah, this is something you miss, Vic, by not watching our channel's live streams, you see, because uh, you, you don't get to talk about the ferns and the, the broken trees in the background and who broke those trees who as well. Who broke those trees? Oh, I have no plants it's... in my house, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, same, <laughs> same here. I, 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 have, I have three cats that love eating them and then uh, regurgitating mm -hmm. those contents. So we, we have yeah. a no plants rule as well, actually. So, so yes, it's... Uh... I, have, I, I have nothing in this hotel room. It's, it's just... It's, it's just bare, really. You're missing you know, it, aren't you? Mike, Mike Miller in the chat. Hi, Mike. He, he says, R.A.M., rest in mulch, which I think is a good point to leave it personally. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Here's, here's Thank the you. outro. Thank you. Talking